praise the Lord. Thank you for joining every one of you. Wherever you're joining, hey, from God bless you. I believe today, you know, has been a wonderful day. You and your family, it has been a wonderful day. Blessed be God who daily loaded us with benefits. God has been wonderful. And may his name be praised in the name of Jesus. I believe you also had a great day as well. Because you're going to have another great encounter now. So buckle up, sit tight, and don't tune out on me. I want you to do one of the things for me. Make sure you share the broadcast. Click on the share button and then you see where it is where the copy. Get the link, put it on all your social media platforms as well. Also be among those who would also publish the word. The Lord sent for his word and that was the number of them that published it. Also be one of those who do that. God bless you. It's the word God has placed in my spirit. Once the word is placed in your spirit, it becomes a word that has to be lifted up. So let's go straight to the word. And I'm praying God will bring every one of us, listen to my viewers, to a place of meaning and essence in your lives and mine will also be furnished. In the name of Jesus. All right, I'm going to read from Ephesians 1 and verses 19, but I'm going to pick, you know, uh, an expression, a phrase, so to speak, uh, from the preceding text, which is verse 18. Ephesians 1, 18 and 19, but I'm going to read 19 and 20. But now 18, there's a, a statement I want to pick. Now look at Ephesians 1, 18, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that ye may know. And you know, they will say a few things, they hope, of his calling and uh, what uh, what you know uh, and what the riches of the of the glory and all that. Now let's go to nineteen. That you may know, you know that's still you know uh, continuing from eighteen. What is the exceeding that's nineteen greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Uh, verses 20, which he wrote in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. I'm speaking on the subject, the greatness of his power, the greatness, you know, of his power, the magnitude of his power. Like when David said in Psalm 66, verses 3, and said, through the greatness of thy power, thou will cause thy enemies uh, to submit. And he said, O Lord, thy enemies will submit. So there's, you know, this extent to which God himself will display his power and no demon, no power, no devil, no Satan would, you know, uh, would, you know, try to oppose it. There's no, there's no such, you know, spirit that would oppose such power. The greatness, the magnitude of his power. God's power is unlimited. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. God is all-knowing. God is everywhere. And there's no way where there's a way. That God is not. God is all powerful. See, the, the devil moves to and fro, but God, you know, it's where he is. And by the time he's going to where he's going to, we discover that he's already arrived. Uh, praise the Lord. And so, you know, there's a lot of people you know the book of Ephesians. It also, also believe that the, the book of Ephesians was written uh, between 60 to uh, 63 AD. Uh, but that's on the bone of contention for today. And if you also believe that when Paul was in the Roman prison, that is when he wrote the book of Ephesians, the epistle. And to people who would want to uh, uh, live a Christ-like life, Paul believed that they would receive the, the gospel. And so he wrote to them. And then this gospel, the epistle, of what was, was also written to you know, a grooming or a maturing church. And so it gives a balanced view of the body of Christ in its entirety and also its importance in the body or in God's economy as well. That's why when you look at the book of Ephesians 1 till the end, you discover that doctrine occupies most of the verses in the book of Ephesians. Like when you read from Ephesians 1 to 3, it introduces a principle uh, that, you know, well, with regards to God's accomplishment, Ephesians 4 to 5 through 5, uh, introduces, you know, a principle, you know, with regards to our present existence. While is Ephesians 6 also introduces a principle that has to do with our daily struggle. But, you know, in its entirety, the book of Ephesians uh, gives, you know, a balanced view of the body, the body of Christ, and also its importance or essence as regarding God's economy. 
or right, that you know summarily that's what we can say about uh, the book of Ephesians and there are also key, uh, key verses in the book of Ephesians but today we are going to look at verses 19 that you may know what is exceeding greatness of his power to us what we believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead or from dead okay from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places you know why this uh, Ephesians 1 19 is, is powerful is because of the four words that has to do with power, might, strength, and all that. All of them are used in one verse. But you can see other verses where they are used, probably one or two or thereabout. And so this is Paul's greatest prayer, and it's very powerful. Just like when Jesus prayed in John 17, one of the greatest prayer of all time was when you know he prayed in John 17. That was the Lord's prayer. All right, but this is Paul's prayer that he may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. So us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And so we are going to you know explore some you know quick words because without that we won't be able to really understand what we are saying. The greatness of his power, the magnitude of his power. So we are going to look at that four words, that Greek word that has every power, jump back in only a verse. <laughs> And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Power, that's the first one. What is the exceeding greatness of his power? The power there in Ephesians 1 19 speaks of dunamis. Of course, that's a Greek word for power. Is dunamis. 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 That's the first word. And so, when, if you are writing, you know, we are going to take the four powers one after the other. So the first one here is Dunamis. You see, uh, you see, that's a Greek word for power, Dunamis. And you know, Dunamis speaks of an inherent power, intrinsic power, or what you call or, or what I call residual power, omnipotent power of God. That is dunamis. And of course, you know, in this dunamis, you know, the Greek is um, every now and then more often used in the English, you know, lexicons like words like dynamic or dynamics, dynamo, dynamite, and all that. But the dynamics here is not used when, as regarding to dynamics. It is used you know, in regards to dynamo. You know, D-Y-N-A-M-O, dynamo. For example, you know, your generator, you know, that's, that's the generator as a dynamo. It converts, you know, mechanical energy to electrical energy as well. And so, the dynamics is an inherent power. Power that resides, you know, within one. Duna. You know, that's ability, capacity. When you look at the word Duna, D-U-N-A, you know, that ability, that, you know, capacity that is placed within you. So, it is not a reserved kind of power. It is loan. It is imparted. So, that is dynamics. That's the first power. That you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power, that first power is dunamis. And I said dunamis has to do with an intrinsic power. Power that is put, you know, within oneself, within you. It is just the restored. You know, like when a battery is fully charged, that power is there. And so dunamis is a residual, it's a residual power. And you see, this power that is in us, once you are born again, you are saved by salvation. This power is incorporated within yourself. It is in you. It is not something you have to go and look for. See, dynamics, I said, is in you. Once you are born again, that means you are fully charged. You know, like potential energy, I'll come to that. Because, you know, we were taught in school that potential energy is energy. Uh, the body is stored or stored in the body. 
because of its position. The kinetic is because of its motion as well. So it is day that is in you, like you know, God's omnipotent power. It is a residual power that has dynamics that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. And now let me say a few things now. Uh, you see, when you look at that in Ephesians 1 19, and what is the exceeding greatness? There are two qualifying words before that power, which is exceeding greatness. You know, I'm speaking on the subject, the greatness of his power. And so that they may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power. That power is dynamic, the first one. Now, there are two qualifying words before the power that qualifies that power, which are exceeding and greatness. Now, when you look at the Greek word for exceeding, it means it, 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 the Greek word for exceeding it means hyperbalo. Or some will see hyperbalon. H U P R B A W L O. Or in, it will be on the screen. They understand. Exceeding, hyperbalon. Now, exceeding, the hyperbalon means to throw something beyond uh, the spot or beyond a goal or a mark. Like you have a mark now. And this is the point, and then you you throw something, stone or whatever, and it goes beyond the the mark that goal. That is what we call the hyperbolon. H U B E R B A sometimes double L O N or L or double L O hyperbolon. Do you understand what I'm saying? That you may know what is the hyperbolon, that's the exceeding, you know, hyperbolon, the exceeding greatness. And the word greatness there in the Greek means make a source. Make a source. M E G E T H O S. And that you may know what is the hyperbolon, make a source of his power of his dynamics. And so make a toast means, you know, fast, like huge, you know, gigantic, you know, something to be in, you know, in such, you know, uh, an astronomical, you know, in a proportion. So the exceeding greatness, the exceeding is the hyperbolon. So when something goes beyond, beyond, and that's because of the magnitude of its power. And so that you may know what is the hyperbolon mechatos of his dunamis. So that speaks of the greatness of his power, the magnitude exceeding beyond the hyperbolon. And not just beyond, the thing is so huge that nobody can stop when it is coming. There is nothing you can compare God's power to or with, like tsunami, wild wind, there's no such thing, earthquake and whatever. And look at the flood when God had to destroy the world through flood. That was the greatness of his power. He had to cause his enemies to submit. So when they saw the flood, no point, they tried helping themselves, but it was not working. So that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to horse work as to you, that is in you. You see that word to us, what? Uh, the Greek word to us, to us, what? To us, what? Uh, the Greek word is E I S. It, it is you no know, eyes. That's how it's pronounced. It means into, to put something into. To us, what? That is in us. Not just God, that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of His tsunamis in you. And that shows you the, the magnitude of his power, the hyperbolon, the cathos of his tsunamis in you. I believe you understand what I'm saying. To so look at those two qualifying words before the power, the, the tsunamis. So what is in you is not just, you know, um, um, something that can be measured, that can be quantified, there's no such thing. It is a power that is beyond, that is so vast, so huge.
And so, you know, in First Corinthians 1, 24, the Bible says, both to the Jews, to the Greek, and to them that are called Christ, the power and the wisdom of God. And so, when you look at First Corinthians 1, 24, Jesus Christ is also called the power of God. He is that dunamis, the power of God. I believe you understand what I'm saying. And that's what I was speaking in John 1, 12. For as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. So once you receive him, Jesus himself is the power of God. First Corinthians 1, 24. The Christ, the power and the wisdom. So that power is the dunamis. The power and the wisdom of God. So once you have him, once you receive him, there's that power. And this power is an infinite power. It cannot be measured. The exceeding the human alone, beyond greatness, make a toast of his two names of his power. As you are hearing me now, if you are born again, you have relationship with him. There is this power in you, and you may know. So Paul was trying to, you know, enlighten them while he was in prison that they themselves may know. So it's not just coming to him, that's all enough. There's a power, there's a dunamis in you. There's an ability, there's a capacity in you. That God has incorporated. It is not that you deserve it. It is you not know, like loaned. It is imparted. It is given. So the dunamis, it, it is the blessed to our power. It's a power that is raised while in you. It's stored like potential energy. It is there in you. Let's see what the power does. You know, there are a lot of them. I said Jesus is also the power. You know, that the dunamis, that's Christ. The Holy Spirit also is the power of God as well. Paul speaking in Romans 15, verse 19. He said, For I have fully preached the gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Spirit. So when once you know you are born again and then your mind is renewed. No, when you are not born again, once you are not born again, you have a dead spirit. And at that point is your is your soul that has become, you know, like the master, like the boss. And of course, you know, from the soul comes the self, where the flesh will have to subdue once the flesh overcomes self. You know, I've been teaching this over and over again. So by now, those of you who are my viewers should be conversant or used to details of the soul, the spirit, and the body as well. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so the Holy Spirit also is the power of who? It's the power of God. Paul said, I have fully preached the gospel through the power of the Spirit. So that means when I'm preaching without the power of the Spirit, you can't preach the gospel. I'm telling you, because there's that dynamic in you. Once you come to him, there's this power. It is like, you know, Latin, it is like, you know, a Latin, a, you know, kind of power. So there's this Latin heat, there's this power in you. That's why when the Bible is speaking, it said Jesus was with the doctors and all, all of them, and the, and, the Bible, and the power of God was present to heal. That was, you know, was present to heal, that was tsunamis. That, be, that became, this was thought, was already in him was there. So that dynamics became energized, you understand, and become active as well. Then there was a drive, and then there was a manifestation. <laughs> you see the four powers playing, you know, a, a, a part and coming to fruition, and the power of God was present to heal. When we are done, we will understand what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. And so the Holy Spirit is also the power of God, which is the dunamis. And that's why God, uh, Paul speaking in 2 Timothy 1, Saturday, said, God has given us the spirit of fear, but that of what? That of power. Sound mind. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. And so when you have the Holy Spirit, it comes into you. There's dunamis. And of course, you know, once you receive Christ, once you accept his lordship, the Holy Spirit now comes. 
into your spirit man so what you have at that point is that you've been you know you've been you know imparted with this residual power so the power we have is not <laughs> this is not a nuclear power i'm telling you whatever those that you know that comes from nuclear fission and all those uh, nuclear fission nitrogen bomb and and the other one atomic bomb nuclear fission and nitrogen bomb uh, for nuclear fission as well this energy is more powerful than any nuclear whatever uh, power or energy i'm telling you what is in you <laughs> seriously that's how powerful we are and you may know what is the exceeding the human alone greatness make a cause of his power of his dynamics now let me show you something in face peter Praise should be first Peter. We will say second Peter chapter one verses three to four. Second Peter chapter one verses three to four. Are you blessed? The greatness <laughs> of his power. Second Peter one three verse four. Let one three to four. Let me read. According as his divine power had given unto us all what all things now pay attention according as his divine power you see that power now that's dynamics had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue some believe to grace and peace whereby had given unto us exceeding great and precious promises uh, that by this he might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped, not you are planning to escape, already you've escaped, having escaped once you have that relationship with him, having escaped the corruption that is in the in the world. This is what the dunamis does. What dunamis does? What dunamis? Like I said, I gave you Romans 15 verses 19. Paul said that I I have fully preached the gospel by the power of the Spirit. You understand what I'm saying? According, this is what Bruno is does, according as his divine power had given unto us all things. So what Dunamis does, Dunamis is the power that gives us all things, not some, nothing is excluding nothing dunamis gives us all things according as his divine power to so believe you are writing this more or less like you know doing you know a, an expository study you know in ephesians 1 uh, 1 19 or 20 as well and you are going to be blessed and so this is the power that gives us what all things now, according as his divine power, that power, divine power, there is dunamis. You know, dunamis, that hidden power that is in you, residual power, had given unto us, us, the us, you know, the believers, all things that pertain unto life and what? And godliness. You see, uh, according as is, the H I S, you see that uh, is. Uh, the genitive uh, pronoun there you know when you look at Peter face second Peter 1 and 2 the Simon Peter is seven an apostle of Jesus Christ and when you look at verses 2 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord and so when you look at 3 now according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness now the genitive pronoun you know we don't need to go into that and because when you look at you know the, the, the preceding text jesus is also mentioned the father is also mentioned and so uh, the deity of christ is a strong undercurrent uh, when you look at the preceding text as say computer 2 uh, um, 1 verse 1 and 2 as well and so according as is divine so let's take that is a deity of christ 
because in him dwell the good or the, the, the fullness of the Godhead or the Lycoris at 2 verses 9 and we are complete in him I wanted to, to explain that you know Genesis pronoun you know the is according as is divine so whose divine nature or whose divine power are we talking about that speaks of the deity of Christ that's why I say that the preceding text that the deity of Christ is a strong one that so we don't need proudly to go into that. So he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. This is what he gives us, not just all things. All things that pertain to life and what? And godliness. Of course, you know that in English, that speaks of in, in the Addis, or in the Addis, in English, where uh, an expression, you know, of a single idea by... Uh, by two expressions that are connected, you know, has given unto us. Now, watch me so that you understand. Has given unto us life and godliness. See, life and godliness. You know, in English, that's in the Addis, H E N D I A D Y S, in the Addis, where you can express a single um, idea using two words that are connected to each other. It's like where yeah, I'm sitting and I can say this is a nice and a warm in environment. Well, that same English word can be used thus. This is a nicely warm environment or nicely warm. But the first one I, I, I was using was this is a nice and warm. You understand? But we can say a nicely warm environment. So, unto has given unto us life and godliness. We can say a godly life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, in the Addis, as in English, that's what it means. And that life and godliness, that life speaks of a renewed world life. That is regeneration and the godliness that speaks of sanctification. Once your life is renewed, you have to work on your own salvation, I'm telling you, by God, with fear and what? Fear and trembling, with K, with K. It's a conspection as well. And so he has given that power, gives you all things. And this thing is, you know, you have this renewed life, life and godliness, godly kind of life, godly life. So you are not just living for yourself, you are living for who? For him. The Bible says that the love of Christ constrained us, and we thus touch that if one died for, for all, then we are all dead. So that the life you are now living is not your life, but it's life you are living for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is wonderful. The dunamis of God to so give us all things pertaining to life and godliness. When once you are renewed, you know, you have to live uh, a sanctified kind of life. We don't conform to this world, but we transform by the renewing of your mind. When you bring your mind on that subject, you subject your mind to the world. In what ways are the young man plays his way? I'm telling you, by taking heed according to your word. And so you are able to do that, to live a sanctified life because of the dynamics that is what? That is in you. And that's what it does. Through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. So this divine power is according to God's knowledge. To the knowledge of him that had called every one of us to glory and virtue. And some early Bible scholars that that glory and virtue speaks of grace and peace. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So the power, not just the power that gives us all things, we become partakers of God's promises because of this power. That's what Donald is so draws. It gives us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And we also become partakers of God's word. Promises. So the promise is embodied in his deity in, in Christ is or becomes the objective means through which the divine nature is also communicated to all the believers. Let me say that again. No, we become partakers of his promises as well. So the promise is embodied in him, in his deity in Christ, becomes an objective means 
uh, through which the divine nature of God is communicated to us, the believers. Is anybody here still here with me? And so we become partakers of His word promises. You see, in one of those times, this and 44, I can't remember the verse that he said, he said, He will choose for us, you know, our inheritance, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. When you read in our dialect, that the image with him, you know, on you, or don't take all me, you know, my day. God forget them all. The image with him, you know, on you. They will go and drink it. God don't take all me, you know, some more. They might. We will choose for us our own inheritance, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved. So the dunamis is, is what makes us a partaker of all the promises of God that are in Christ. And so that's what the dunamis does. It gives us all things pertaining to life and godliness, renewed life and sanctification. Once your life is renewed, it means you know regeneration. Your spirit is dead or was dead. Ephesians 2, that we were dead in our trespasses. We will live according to the course of this life, the powers in the air and, and all that. And so once you are renewed, that your blessed spirit becomes, you know, is enlivened, becomes alive. And then the Holy Spirit now comes into your spirit man and dwells in your spirit man. And then you begin to live a sanctified life. That is what dunamis does. And it also makes us partakers of God's word. Promises, of course, you know, all God's promises are in Christ. You can't get anything, you can't have anything outside of who? Outside of Christ. That by this, you might be partakers of the divine nature. So, what gives us, you know, a life of God? You know, that the way, you know, God's uncreated life is because of the dunamis. You know, when God created man and breathed into man, that breath, and that was not the uncreated life of God. Because at that point, you know, man was not renewed. That was not. And that breath was just, you know, a breath that produces two kinds of life, the soulish and the spiritual one, life. But that was not the uncreated breath of God because you can only have God's un uncreated um, breath or life once you are born again, you are renewed as great generation. That's when you can have that uncreated life. According as his divine power, what he gives us, he makes us partakers of the divine nature where we are like him. Not until we see him. We with open faces as we holding in a glass that uh, change into that image, that same image. From glory to glory by, by the same spirit. And so that's what Dunamis does. You know, the power is within me, isn't you? Like the only potent power of God, graceful power, power of God. And so it makes us partaker. It gives us God's life divine nature once you are born again that's what happened having escaped the corruption that is in the world now pay attention having escaped not will escape having escaped that means already you have what escape the corruption that is in this world so that means there's a corruption that is in this world that is the power because it makes us, you know, we have this divine nature. You know, God is light. And so, you know, like even day when I, um, I make mention of the three triangles of perfection, which is love and light and then life. What prevents you from having corruption that comes from the system, from the world, is light. That's what about just let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and no one and glorify God the Father. And so, when once you have the divine nature, this power that comes with once you're born again, that divine nature, so God is light, you also have to live up that virtue of Him. 
Because if they are virtues, God is all of them. And that's when God created you in His image, you have to live out that image. And by living out that image, that is the expression of God's likeness. <laughs> and God is light. And then you also light. You are the light of the world. You see the world having escaped the corruption that is in this world. So what prevents corruption from the world is the light. Because already you have become like Him. You have taken that divine nature. You know why when you look at people committing sin, like for example now you're watching uh, uh, pornography as, as well, you watch those things, then you're watching all those new pictures that then you start having this, you know, your, your feelings be, begin to arouse lustfully. You think, you no know, nonsense and all that is because you've not gotten to a point where you become a partaker of the divine world nature. That dynamics in you is is just you know it, it is like a stored energy power that has not been energized because it has to be energized it has to be what energized as well and so you look at all those things you're watching video now see couples of people are kissing and then the next thing you have is start having feelings you feel like being with someone and all that. <laughs> what you have in you is just thought. It's not in the jazz, it's not working. Believe you understand what I'm saying? That's what the dunamis does. And you see, in one of those Thessalonians, I think first Thessalonians 1 verse 5. Now look look at what Paul said. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, not only in word. For our gospel came to you not only in word in word, but also in power, dynamics, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. He said, for our gospel did not only come to you only in word, but also in power, not only in power, but also as a dynamics, but also in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, because you know what you know, manner of people we were among you guys. You see, that is the dunamis. So every word of God that comes to you comes with dunamis. It comes with that inherent power. There's a power embedded in it, incorporated in every word that comes from God. And most times you don't see, you know, the manifestation of God's power, like you go to church. And what you hear is just preaching, preaching, doctrine, teaching and all that, and there's no manifestation of power, probably. What you have there is is thought dunamis that has been you no, know, you know, uh, that is just residual. The power probably is not or may not have been energized. And Paul said, Our word did not just come to you, the, the gospel, not just you know, in wood only, like I'm speaking, but he said, in power, in dunamis, the Holy Ghost. Much assurance, oh, with hope, so that you know somebody is preaching and you uh, and the word is giving you hope. Faith is the substance of thing hope for, the evidence of thing not seen. So faith is evidence not seen, because hope that is seen is not hope. And so you are hearing the word now, and it it, it, it is building your faith. Oh, our gospel did not come just only in word. May words, but also in power, dynamics, in the Holy Ghost, much assurance, much hope. So now you're listening and then it builds your, it, the world is building your faith. Your hope, your character, your relationship with God is bells. That's how the world should be. David, in one of those Psalms, was telling God, Psalm 119, verse 49 and 47, he said, remember the word which thou did make, which thou caused your servant to hope upon. So there are certain words that should be hoped upon. There are certain promises that have to be hoped upon. And so the word does not need to come only in word. And it's even today, you know, in, in, in the Christian of what we have now is more of words, no power. I'm telling you, more of words, no power. And of course, I've been saying 
And a sick church cannot heal a lame boy. And when the church is sick, the church will not be able to heal a lame boy. This world is a critical world. This realm is a broken creation. And so the world will have to come with not just a dynamics, but one that is also energized, that is driven and manifested as well. That is dynamics. May they be blessed. Now let's look at the, the, the other part. That's number one. The first power is to do I told you what do does does and all that. What is exceeding, you know, the human alone, greatness make a toast of his dynamics. To us, what that too is EIS, eyes. That is, you know, in something, when something is put in something. So that means the power is in us. To us, what who believe, you have to believe, according to the working, according to the word, to the working of his mighty power. So the next word, great word there that has to do with power, that has to do with mind, strength, is working according to the working. The great word there is a negeo or a negea, a negea. In Negea, in Negea. All right. According to the walking, the walking, the walking of his mighty power. That walking, the Greek word there is a Negea and is a noun. Uh, but that's why you see the, 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 the verbal, you know, counterpart of this in Negea is a Negeo. It will be on the screen, a Negeo. So when you see the word wrath, W-R-O-U-G-H-T, see which called wrath. That's an action word, that's a verb. So the verb for a negeo or a negeia is a negeo. Or most times you will see a negeon as well. And that's why, see the Greek word for, for the word walk, W-O-R-K, walk is agon, E-R-G-O-N, agon. God is the first worker on earth. When he created the world and created man, then he rested from all his works. So God is the first worker on earth. <laughs> so God had, you know, so God will have this ability of working in us as well. Believe you understand what I'm saying. According to according to oh God, this is wonderful. Oh, blessed Holy Spirit, according to the working, the working, the working, the energia of his mighty iscos, power, cattles. we we'll get into that. So the next word now, Greek word, that you have there, the first one was power, dynamics. The next one is walking, enegea. And I said the Greek counterpart, that, you know, the verb counterpart is enegeo. You see, you walk, what God walk and wrath, wrath, W-R-O-U-G-H-T. You know, God, you know, or walking, you know, in a or in All right, now, when once someone is safe, immediately you are born again, you are safe. What God's putting you is a negaya. So, a is an operating power. A power, you know, that's, yes, that's the best way to use it is an operating power. Power and you see, when we have such words, lexicons in English like energy, of course, you know, energize. So you have, you know, the word, you know, energia, energia, the work, egon. And you see, that working means energia. And this energia no, is en like energy, e n e n e n e. R G E I A in Negea. Now the word that that the, the, the prefix, you know, E N, that E N, energy, N, N, that E N, it means you know to put something into into that's you understand what I'm saying? This is something, and then you put something into something. I believe you understand what I'm saying. So Enegaya is God's 
you know, ability uh, by which he places in us his holy ethic work. God's ability whereby he places in you his holy work or holy ethic work. You know, ethic like, you know, E-T-H-I-C. So he puts in you, that is why you see, when you see energy, energy, that E-N is like, you know, putting something into something, into something. I believe you understand up to that point. So when once someone is born again, what happens is that God puts in him what? That energy. That enigaya. So enigaya is an operating energy. It is an operating power, operating strength. What motivates you? What gives you inspiration? That passion. That hunger for the things of God is what? Is in mm -hmm. Every now and then, you know, when it's time for church, you have this, you know, burning desire. Like every said, the seal of my father's house had eaten me up. So you have that seal, that passion, that hunger for the things of God. I want to go to church. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. You have that. He said, no, I can't go. I'm late for church. I need to be in church. What motivates you? Hmm? What does what motivates you? What gives that motivation? Is a negaya because a negaya is an operating energy, is an operating power, the power that operates within you, that works within you. The Bible speaking in Philippians 2 12 and 13, I say, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And when you look at verses 13 of Philippians 2, it says, For it is God that walking in you both to will and to do his work. It is good pleasure. For it is God which walking in you. That walking there in Philippians 2 13 is a negaya. It is God that walking. You understand that walking, this is like past tense. And so this is a work that, all, that had already been done by God, worked by God Himself. Work in by God, and so what you have there is you know, uh, enegeo. It is God that working in you both to will and to do His work, His good pleasure. So, no matter how you want to save God, you want to follow God, you do the things of God, it is God that will have to work in you know, in your force. God is the author, we are the actors. He does all things and we do all things. So he is the author. We are the one. The actors, you, you have the, you know, the uh, person who directs the movies or the, the play as well. And then you have to act what you, what is giving you the script. So God is the author and we are the one. We are the actors. He does everything. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We were not told to work it out. They say work out because already it has been worked in. So God does the job. It is the grace of God that does the working. It is not what? It is not you. So it is the grace which assigns the will uh, to do that which is good. Not only what uh, that which is good and also to perform it as well so it is not of us that is why the strength is not in us and so the merit is, is, is not also in, in us it's for its good work pleasure it is called that working in you go to will and to do its pleasure you can have a desire to save god to do the things of god but god will have to do a work in you there is this book, you know, operating power in you. Once you are, you are saved, what God puts in you is a negative. Because that's what is going to give you that motivation. And also, it, let me also read a portion. That's what a negative does. You know, you know, I said something about a negative. Once you are saved, God puts in you a, a negative. And see, this a negative does not only come to you. When the word of the Lord is in you, when you have God's word in you, what you have in you is 
ini gaya nah Hebrews 4 so that the word of God is quick and powerful powerful, see that powerful that's ini gaya, sharper than any two edged sword uh, piercing even to the dividing of the soul and also and the spirit the joint and and the marrow and it's also the descent of the thoughts and the intents of the heart and so the word is quick and powerful see that powerful that is powerful so in the word of the lord is what that energy that energy that energizes you that's what energy does it does what it energizes you as well now let's see what paul says in in ephesians 3 verse 7 wherefore i was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given unto me by the effectual working of his power say wherefore or whereof i was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given unto me by the effectual working you see that working of his power so there's no how Paul would have been made a minister with that the gift of grace, which is as a result of the working or the effectual working of his word, of his power. And you see what you see in, in Ephesians 37 speaks of two power, working in Nigeria. And also there's also a dunamis, there's a power. So when you have dunamis in you, once you know you the born again, there's dunamis, that grace power power. That dunamis will have to be, you know, energized. It has to be what? Energized. Not just leaving it there. It's like someone gave you money and say use it for your work, keep your living expenses. And then when you got home, what you did was you just kept the money one place and you did not use the money. So at that point, what you have there is just, you know, like the potential energy. That money is is stored. It's like you have the money in account, a fixed account, and the money is also you're not using it for anything. So that money has not been what energized. So Paul said, "We of I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working in area of His dynamics, not just the working, the oppressive power. There was this residual power in me." once i accepted him because you know you you don't just start preaching without having relationship with god so before he started preaching he had an encounter when he had a bright date with god on his way to damascus so there was that dunamis but that dunamis was activated was energized and so grace was now available already and this grace was empowered by the operations that exist within him you no know, god does the work that grace which align the will to do that which is good not just to do that which is good and also to perform so what god, god does is god first gives you that that faith motions in your soul and that god is working you does not mean you will not work he said, work out your own salvation with fear and what and trembling. Because if you know it is God that works in us, both to will and to this pleasure, that like God is working in you and you are so idle. No, that's not the no. It also speaks of you know idleness. This power is void of being idle. Because if it is only God that will work in us, and that will make you know the old statement invalid. It will become our own, you know, it will be you know, like a, 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 a supposition or a total uh, that is void of not just power, that is just personal, that's just you, and what is really happening. So you have to work out what was worked in, or what already had been worked in, and the work is done by God. Where it gives us a faint motion, it places it in, in your soul, in your spirit, in your heart. And then there's a desire to do the things of God. That's what Enigaya does. And this Enigaya is also in God's word. 
in what way can a young man place his way be by taking it according to your word? Your word. When once the word of Christ falls in Corinthians 3 16, they said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Richly, you know, we stop teaching and admonishing one another with sounds and hymns and spiritual songs. So, when once you have the word now, that word begins to work, work in you. That is the enegaya, it begins to work, a work. You understand what I'm saying? So, enegaya is that operating power. And it's either in you. You can just sit like this, and then you have a desire to pray. Is this strong desire to pray, and it drives you into to a place where you begin to pray, and you can stay there for hours, groaning, groaning, and traveling in the place, in the place of prayer. What is happening at that point is that the dunamis in you have been energized. The dunamis. You know, this is still same. You see, one power that you know, you know, we have one spirit but different function, no operations. This is God's power that is residual. But this residual power will have to be energized. And once this power is energized, it gives you a drive. It gives you what? A drive. That's what happens. You are driven into doing things because of the enegeya. And you may know what is the exceeding the you Babylon, greatness megatos of his dynamics of his power to us one who believe according to the work in the enegeya of his mighty power, of his mighty, mighty iskus power and kratos. So you see the four words, Dunamis, Enegeya, East Coast, and Kratos, incorporated into one text, Ephesians 1.19. And there's that Enegeya in you, there's that operating power in you that is giving you the drive, the passion for the things of God. Well, you see believers, you know, they don't, they don't have passion for the things of God. They, they, there's no hunger for the things of God. There's no issue. What, what you have is just, you know, the, the power, that is residual in them and it's not active. They are not using the power, nothing is really happening. I just did. Are you blessed? Maybe it's not difficult, I'm trying to, to break it to, to a more simpler thing as well. What I was taught in school was, you know, the, you know when uh, at times you have a, a complex reaction, but you know, like chemistry. Or the, or the, most of us, or those of us who started chemical engineering, so when you when you're given a reaction, and then you want to reduce that reaction to a simpler, you know, a form that can that could be, that could be you know assimilated. What what you do is use what you call the whole gums razor, <laughs> you know, the whole gums razor. That's what we, that's what we use. Whole gums razor. You can use you know a, a, a more simpler method in order to probably. Uh, reduce a complex reaction to its lowest theme, like those of you who, who saw it math, they will say, you know, reduce it to a you know, echelon form, something like that. And then you have to use, you know, different, different methods and get it reduced to a simpler method as well. So I believe I've done that, so I'm using the whole GAMS razor as well. <laughs> All right, now let's continue. According to the working, that working speaks of the Negea. Of is mighty. The next Greek word there that has to do with power is spread is Iskus. I S C H U S. So the working, anything that has to do with work, speaks of a nigga, yeah, Aegon, as a Greek word for work. Of is mighty. That mighty is Iskus. Iskus. What is the exceeding the human alone make a toast of his dunamis to us who believe according to the energia of his Iskus, of his mighty Iskus, of his mighty, you know, you know, that mighty, you know, that's an adjective, uh, but it has also a Greek, you know, a counterpart, which is Iskus. And so the, 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 this Greek word Iskus, you know, it has a root word that has to do with echo, Norman echo, E C H O. Echo. And this echo, you know, has to do with, you know, uh, the ability to hold on to, not giving up. 
something that is sustained. And so East Coast means a holding of power, the holding power, power that is, or a power that sustains. That's East Coast. I A C H U S. East Coast is power that sustains. East Coast is power that does what? That sustains. Holding up, not giving up. That's why the root word for East Coast is echo. E C H O. Holding on, you know, being you know, able uh, to be sustained, and that's East Coast. According to the working of this East Coast, so East Coast is, you know, a you know, a possessing kind of power. Power that holds on, power that sustains. <laughs> All right, now let me say you know a few things you know as regarding his schools. You now when you look at First John chapter one verses, or First John two verses fourteen, uh, John the beloved John talking to the brothers and said, "I write unto you, young men, uh, because ye are strong, and the word of the God abided in you." Let's see so that we can read and let me show you something. First John 2, verses 14. He said, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong. Now look at the word strong. You know, you know, all this word has to do with strength, with might, and all that. He said, I'm writing to you, young men, because ye are strong. So the strong man is his course. Why? And the word of God abided in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. So there's a power that keeps you, while you are in affliction, in trials, you still hold on. That is called the word, the discourse. It is a power that sustains. It is called discourse. So discourse is what sustains you. It sustains your faithfulness, your determination in the things of God, your commitment in the things of God. What gives you a drive, passion for the things of God is what? In Egea. You have, you know, there's this passion for, for the things of God because of the Enegea, which is rough in you. And this is, you know, the work is done by God where I said the grace which align the will, not just good to do, but, but also to perform. So what gives you after the drive? You have the passion, you want to go to church, you want to pray, you are driven to the place of prayer. What sustains you? Not for years. What keeps you there is what? Is the East Coast. I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. East Coast. And the word abide in you. So already they have the word. Because once you have the word, you know that's there's also an idea in the word. So when the word lives in you, that is in Egea. So what keeps you? What sustains you? You can't stay longer in the place of prayer because there's no excuse. The power in you is just residual, it's just there. That power was not energized, was not activated. And so that power could not be exercised because it has to be you know, in a chance and also what exercise so that it grows like muscle. That's the East Coast. I believe you understand what I'm saying. So what keeps you in that place of faithfulness with God is what? The East Coast. It keeps you in that place of commitment with God. No, you can't stay in a place of faithfulness with God because 
what you have is just residually you it's just said on there it's like a sediment nothing is really happening that's not been stirred and so today you will do well you will save god well tomorrow you will fall today you will do this tomorrow you will fall because you've not been sustained you started preaching at the place of work and then you stop because you've not been what sustained Do you know that, that people, when they face trials and temptation, they give up easily. When they're being tempted, things are happening and they give up easily. Do you know why? There is no holding power. Nothing is holding them. Like all that Job went through, he said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Can you get to a point where you say, Though he slay me, yet I will do what? I will trust him. I will trust in him. They do is slay me. But yet you will trust him. Things are not tell up, you know, your own specification. Things are not really working. And to you, you know, this is a prodigious, no madness. This is nonsense. Why am I saving God and then I'm not enjoying, you know, I'm not a beneficiary of what God is doing to others. And then you begin to doubt God. And of course, you know, the issue comes in life when you are praying for something and then you see God doing things around your vicinity, your environment, God healing. Your friend, your friend, you know, is 40 or 45 and then she got married and put away. And then you're walking and nothing is happening. And then you see God helping people, bless people around you. Then, as much as they don't happen to you, then you begin to doubt. As if, you know, God is, you know, selective, He's showing some people them as well and then you begin to doubt because things are happening around you and they don't get to you so doubt and unbelief selling as well and you know even now then i used to say that doubt is a struggle is i'm telling you doubt itself is a, is a struggle it's a struggle unbelief is a condition doubt is a struggle i know it's not easy like what job was going through what he went through but yet he said Though he slay me, say again, I will trust with him. I will trust him. Even though he slay me, I will trust him. Have you got to that point? When God is not giving you what you've been praying for, and then you are still holding onto him like Ruth. I had to cling to Naomi. Entreat me not to leave thee. Don't tell me to go back. Where you go, that's where I will go. Your God will be my God. That was a true confession was converted to the Jewish into Jewish belief and system as well. And so you are not stable because what you have in you is just a residual power that has not been energized, that has not been activated. And, the, and, and there's no drive as well. That, it, that power is just there. There are some that they don't have passion for the things of God, no zeal for the things of God. So any day they feel like you're know, going to church, they go to church. Any day they feel like praying, they pray. And some will only pray when they have issues. They want to pray when they want to pray. Where they want to pray, how they want to pray, if they want to pray. They want to sing at the choir when they want to sing. Where they want to sing. How they want to sing, if they want to sing. They want to study the word when they want to study the word. Where they want to study the word. How they want to study, if they, they want to study the word. And so there's no passion. Because what you have in them is just a residual, a sediment that has not been energized. Paul said that you may know, that you may know, that you may know. Already this thing is in you, that you may know. What is the exceeding, the hip hop alone, greatness maker thoughts of his dynamic power to us who who believe. According to the energy and the working of his mighty discourse, power, kratos. And so there's a power in you. There's a power, and the magnitude of this power cannot be measured. I say it cannot be measured. It cannot be measured. 
know, Jesus, you know, on, on the cross, you know, when he was about dying, when he cried and said, Eli, 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 Eli. You know what happened? That the sun lost its light, the moon, everything was darkened. And the same thing will happen, you know, in the end of grace when it's coming and will mount on my olive, Sakaya 14. Olive will be divided. Then the, the first war, or yes, the war of Armageddon will also take place. But before now, there has to be the war of God and Magog as well before the war of or the battle of Armageddon. So when it's coming, the sun will be darkened. Yeah. And the moon also will not give a light anymore. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give a light anymore. There's a song we used to see, we used to see that uh, by, uh, those days. Mm, on that day, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give a light anymore when the Lord shall come in the cloud of glory. Every eye shall see him. Even they or those that pierce and despise are Jesus. They shall see him that day. On that day, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light anymore when the Lord shall come in the cloud of glory. Every eye shall see him. Even those that spat on him, that smote him on the face. On that day, the sun shall be darkened. Mm, and the moon, and so the sun will be darkened on that day. When he was on the cross, the sun was darkened, like you have the sun. And do you know why? Because he is the sun of righteousness. So this sun will have to bow and say, This is my greater. <laughs> this is the greater on the cross. And he's crying, he's shouting. So I don't know. So let's shut down. So the sun had to, had to be darkened. You can't go and stand and face the sun. You can't. It will melt like wax, like an old garment. But when the sun saw him on the cross, the sun became darker. There was no light. There was an utter darkness all through the face of the earth for three hours. <laughs> and that is why I said that the power in you cannot be compared to any power. Whether that is atomic bombs, hydrogen bombs, nuclear reactors and all that, nothing. Nuclear energy. The power in you cannot be compared to anything. And that is why the whole creation is waiting for us. They are groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. When they themselves will be made anew. Because the time will come when the earth will be, will be made anew, when the earth will become, you know, like, will be born again as well. Because the earth is groaning even till now. The waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's me and you. And so there's this is this 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 power that holds on that sustain. When Jesus was speaking in John 10, 28, and said, As many the Father has given into my hands, he said, Nobody will be able to pluck them out of my hands. In John 10, 28, nobody will be able to block them out of my hand because this is a holding power that holds you, that sustains you and even sickness. Affliction cannot take you out of your place with God. No, that's a warfare. So the devil is coming, he's, going, he's coming to take you out of your place of devotion with God. And Paul was speaking and said, I, that if I perceive that neither affliction, uh, things that be and things that, you know, that be not, whether they be virtuous thrones and uh, principalities, that nothing can separate us from the love of who? From the love of God. Because at that point, there's this only power. There's a power that holds. Kai. <laughs> oh, the East Coast. The East Coast. There's a power that holds, that sustains you. She said, Give up. He said, No. I'm waiting upon him. They that wait upon God, their strength shall be renewed. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run. They shall not be willing, they shall walk and they shall not fence. You are still holding on. He says, Stop, stop going to church. He says, It's okay. Oh. David said, I've been young since when I was young, and now I am old. I 
have not seen the righteous forsaken, neither is seed begging what for bread. I have not seen the Lord changing. He has never changed, and the Lord has changed not. He therefore sons of Jacob, we are not consumed. God has never changed. He's the one whose immutability cannot be impeached. He's the one who laid the prints of his chambers on the waters. He walked on the wheel of the wheel with his tyrant. He seated in the circle of the earth and seated all men as cast upon. He gathered the water in the hand of his hand and comprehended the dust of the earth in his span. And he weighed the mountains and the hills in a scale. That is the God we are worshipping. That is the God we are serving. The greatness of his power. Through the greatness of your power, David said, your enemies will submit. They will submit. Yours will also submit. I say, yours will submit. The greatness, the greatness, the maker cause of his dynamics. The greatness of his power. So your enemies will submit. David said, as soon as they hear of me, they shall bow because of what the dynamics, because of the Enigia, because of the Iskos. There's a holding of power. There's a power that will not allow you to, to, to give up. It, even when you feel like giving up. He said, no, I can't give up. And so that power is available that keeps you in your place of commitment. That power is there. Is anybody here still, still, still hearing me? And that is the discourse. It's a power that holds you in affliction. Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, you have to bow. And they said, even if our God will not save us, there's no issue with that. Not that he doesn't have power to save us. But if God so desire not to save us, and so be it. But on this matter, O King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow. They will not give up. Do you feel like giving up? There is a power in you. It is called the East Coast. The mighty, it is mighty, mighty. It is mighty, mighty. The East Coast. And they say we will not bow, O King, on this matter. We will not do what? We will not bow on this matter. If it were you, by the time they, they were in, if you were late to where you have the, 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 the fiery furnace, you would have given up, you would have shouted. And I will have to If you want to see you, you will see you. If you want to see you, you will see you. If you want to see you, you know, like when people are arrested, you stole something and they said it's you, you said it's not me. And they, you were handed over to, you know, the, uh, the, the police or whatever. And they start giving you this, you know, this unbalanced, you no know, treatment, <laughs> poor daily treatment. And then someone shout at him and say, Oh, it is me. It is I that stole it. They will shout, but they took them to the fire furnace, but they did not open their mouth. They were just quiet. They that wait upon God, that their strength shall be renewed. It might not look well today, but they say, A blessed hope. There's a blessed hope. But we look not for the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. I'm telling you, but the things which are not seen are eternal. If this early house we live, and we are seated, so to be dissolved. We have a beauty, a house not made with the hands in the heavenlies. That is why Abraham would follow God, looking for a city which he, he knew that the builder is God. He was following God. God said, I will go to where I will show you. Until Abraham died, he did not didn't know where God had you know, kept for him. But here, you know, he had some something bigger because when Abraham died, Abraham became a place. When people had, or, had died or are gone, every now and then they will be taken by an angel, those who did what is good to Abraham's bosom. So Abraham had a place called Abraham's what? Bosom. Where he himself becomes a bosom for all the believers. Because I believe so, he is the father. He's the father of faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so there's a place. Things may not really work now. But this light affliction cannot be compared with the weight of eternal glory that shall be revealed. <laughs>
the part of the righteous is as a shining light that shines unto a more perfect one day. So there's a perfect day to your light. Nobody will be able to solve your light. And they can now attack you verbally. You can do something and somebody comes and try to bring you down. But the time will come when they will see your light. Nobody will stand. You can't stand light, of course. Because God himself is light. He himself is light. When God said, let there be light, he was saying, let him, Yahweh, be a light. And there was light. And this light shining out of darkness and darkness, I'm telling you, comprehended it not. And so, there's a blessed day, there's a blessed hope. And so they took them, they cast them into the furnace. They were still quiet. Do he slay me? It looks like God has slain them when they cast them into the furnace. <laughs> You know, sometimes the thing is they're trying to bury you, put you in the ground, not knowing that you have been planted. Then you, you, you come out strong and alive. I'm telling you. Sometimes that's what sickness will do to you. You will feel so, you know, dejected, rejected, abandoned, ostracized. It's like, you know, the seed that is, they are not buried. But once you are buried, then it is gone. It's just, you know, you have been planted. When sickness comes, it, it means you have been what? what whatever is planted, you will have to grow out of, of the soil. Not when you are buried, when you are buried, then it, it is gone. But little did they know that God was waiting for them in the furnace. He was there waiting for them. I said, God was there waiting for them. Now let's look at the last power. All right. So the working of His mighty. East Coast. Then power, that's the last word. Kratos, K R A T O S. Kratos, you see, the, the prefix Kratos, K R A means uh, to perfect, to complete. But it also has a, a verb counterpart, which is Kratio, K R A T E O. And, and that, that has to do you know, to, 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 to imprison and all that. And it's most time this, you know, Kratos is often used, you know, with words like, like, you know, the British English, like, you know, democracy, plutocracy, you know, the government of the wealth, the influence, the, the elites, the aristocracy and, 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 and all that. And, and most time they're also used with words like, you know, uh, when you add another prefix like you know panto or panta like panto kratos you know the almighty the god is you no know, uh pan you no know, panto kratos as well as the almighty as well so kratos is speaks of dominion authoritative power you know, that dominion power dominion power. now kratos is not like um how do i put it it's not like you know dunamis that is residual like his potential. Kratos is released, is a power that is unleashed. And so that means, you know, before Christ's resurrection, Kratos was released, was unleashed, had to manifest. When you look at verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the death. So the power that was wrought in Christ is the Kratos. I believe you understand which was wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So Kratos is more or less like you know, the, the power of resurrection. The power of what? Resurrection. That is, you know, the Kratos. The power that is released, that is unleashed. Now, let me bring all the grace, you know, and, 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 and put them you know, in a box so that you understand what I'm saying. You know, you know, uh, dunamis is residual power. So let's look at dunamis as uh, energy or, or when your battery is fully charged, whether your phone battery or whatever. You know, once your phone is charged or you have a car battery fully charged, you have to use it. So if you keep it, of course, of course, you know it will you understand it will, it will get reduced it will reduce on its own anyhow you want to say it of course we all know that uh, but then this dunamis like your fully charged battery that means you're fully charged 
as you are seated, as you are hearing me now, you are fully charged. These two names in you. You are fully charged, I'm telling you. And as much as you are fully charged now, you have to be, when like this is a car battery and then you want to travel, you have to use your car. So when instances, you know, there are instances that, you know, rises as well, then the battery that is already charged will have to be, you know, energized or made active because you have to use it now. I believe you understand what I'm saying. And that is the Enegea. And then when this battery is energized now, because, you know, you are inside your car now, if on the, you know, the ignition as well, you know, the battery is now energized. Like when you get into your car, the first thing you do is do what? Your ignition, eh? On your ignition, you will energize. The battery is fully charged, but it will have to be energized. All right, so when you start driving, so when you start driving now, you know, that means that power that has been energized, that power is now exercised. And because you are driving it now, so it begins to grow like, you know, muscle, like when a man, you know, is trying to exercise, you know, do some exercise, vigorous ex exercise, or like you want to, you want to do some gyms and whatever. And so now, the fully charged battery now becomes energized when you on your ignition, but then you, you must not stop there. It has to be exercised. Then you, you drive the car. You understand? And that energy now becomes exercised. It grows. You are driving now. The the fully charged battery now begins to work because it is not just energized. It is what fully what exercise and then you will see the car will now take you to places kratos now comes into play there is this an unleash of power it takes you from places to place you can go here you can go and that's a, that's how it is now now let me bring also another uh, uh, you know uh, explanation and put the uh, four of them tonamis enegeya iskus and kratos in a box now what gives you hope is tonamis it is saying you, you know, it is, I have this power in me. Once you are born again, and you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost might have come upon you. So what gives you hope is what? Is what? Dunamis. Now, what gives you drive? D-R-I-P-E is a negaya. You have hope now, but there has to be a drive, a passion. I'm sick, I know God will heal me, that's so. There's this energy that gives you, there's this dynamics. But there has to be a passion. You understand? Attached to this hope. So, dynamics gives you hope. Then, Enegeya gives you what? The drive. Now, what sustains the drive, like you're driving your car, is what? Is the East Coast, the holding power. And now the Kratos, which is the, you know, like the, the resurrection power, the overall and, and all that. Now the Kratos now is like, you know, the overdrive capability in your car, you know, passing the gear. You know, that's how you drive your and beyond. And when you put your, your gear to like gear five, maybe it is, you know, the, that's the highest gear, whatever. And you put, and then you are going like that, you, you don't have issue. So the what you know, the hope, dynamics, the drive, Enegeya, what sustain the drive? You're not giving up, you're still going, is what is the East Coast. You don't give up, is the East Coast. Whatever you're facing in life, you can't back off. You can't, you can't back off, you can't back, you are still there, is the East Coast. And now the Kratos is, you know, like this is, you know, like the authoritative power, dominion, you understand? Where it looks like, like in your car, like the overdrive capability in your car, passing the gear and it's still going. Nobody can stop. You are going like that. At that point, that car is driving and everything is okay, it's responding well and all that. That's the Kratos. 
That they may know, you that is listening to me, that you may know. What is the exceeding the human belong? Greatness make a cause of his tunam his power to us what who believe according to the work in the Negea of his mighty Eskus power crackers, which he wrought in Negeo in Christ when he raised him from the dead. To the power that when Christ died, what brought him to this four power? There was this power, this dunamis. You no know, God is the omnipotence of the power of God. God's omnipotent power as a dunamis. And you see, the power of darkness they may have been celebrating, but the Holy Spirit must have been to the Father and went to the Father and said, We can bring him back. We can bless this dunamis in you. There's this in Egea. You can do wonders, you can rot things in him. Whatever had died in him, you can bring it back to life. You do you understand? And, and, and this in Egea has to be sustained. That's the Hiscus. And then the Kratos will also raise him up as dead. Will, will raise him up as well. And so this is what happened when Christ died. And the same thing will happen. You see, once you are born again, you, you want this encounter, this experience, you, you must be born again. You will have to come to him. And so that this power will be part of you. You have the word also incorporated into you. So this is our portion, this is our Lord, I'm telling you. This is the biggest and the greatest power of all time. Dunamis, Enegea, East Coast, and the Kratos. And this is true. Believe you are blessed. <laughs> See, that was a wonderful, you know, uh, uh, you know, expository uh, study in uh, the book of Ephesians 1, 19 as well. I believe you are blessed. So there's a power in you. And I'm praying that this power already is manifest in your life. It is unleashed, the Kratos, it is unleashed in you in the name of jesus make sure you subscribe our, uh, to our channel and also share the broadcast as well god bless you my name is evangelist evangelist see you and god bless you